Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is, even for non-artists, to use Spriter to customize or edit animations for the specific needs of your own game projects. Not only can you do all the things I'm about to show you with the free version of Spriter, but the art and animations you'll need to follow along with this tutorial are also free to download from a link I'll provide in this video's description. You might recognize this guy here as the fully animated player character from our basic platformer animated art pack. What you may not know is we recently expanded the art pack to include a variation of the player character to be holding a gun and added additional animations for him aiming the gun. What I'm going to show you is the simple process I used to first add the gun to the player's hand in each animation and then to reposition the arms in several animations so that the player would be aiming the gun while standing, walking, etc. The first thing to do, of course, is make sure you have Spider. You can download the free version of Spider by visiting www.brashmonkey.com and then going to the Download Spider page. The free version of Spriter is not a time-limited trial edition. You can do everything you're about to see in this tutorial and more with it. Once you have Spriter installed and ready to go, click on the Download Example Spriter Projects link toward the bottom of our homepage to download the free version of the animated gray platformer character. Once you've done so, unzip the folder and then get ready to follow along. Okay, now that you have everything you need, Double-click on the player.sml folder inside the gray guy folder you recently unzipped. This will bring up, bring up Spider and that file. And you'll see it comes with a series of basic animations for a platformer game. But I've also, for the sake of this demonstration, added a new folder with the gun image. So we're going to add the gun image to the current set of animations. And we're not going to do every animation for this tutorial. We'll just keep with uh, idle. And the first thing you should do whenever you're about to edit an animation uh, in Spriter is to make sure you're on a keyframe. And uh, ideally, for this kind of circumstance, we want to be in the first keyframe. So I'm just going to press the one key on the keyboard. Uh, so you can use the one and two keys to go back and forth specifically to keyframes. So I'm just using the one key to go to the first keyframe. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go into the gun folder. And I'm going to double click on the gun image so that I can set its default pivot point to something more appropriate in case I ever want or need to rotate just the gun. Uh, it will rotate around a more natural uh, pivot point. And now that that's done, I can click and drag on the gun to bring it out on the canvas. I can rotate it into an appropriate position relative to the hand that it's going to go under. Uh, and the hand is uh, right there on top, just beneath the gun I just added. So all I need to do is drag the hand. As you can see, for some reason when I'm screen recording, the uh, canvas doesn't update immediately sometimes when I change the orders. But you can see. Um, uh, it's now the way it belongs. The other way to adjust the Z order, if you select an object, if I hold control and press the left and right keys, I can put it immediately to the absolute top and absolute bottom of the Z order, or the up and down arrows. There's the down arrow to bring it down one. Uh, so that's a nice quick way to adjust the Z order of something uh, in your frame. So now that that's done, I'm going to make sure my bones are showing. And I'm going to zoom in a bit to make this even easier for myself. And I'm going to select the hand bone. Because the gun is in the hand, it should be a slave to however the hand moves or rotates. And I'm going to hold the B key, B for bone. And when I hold that key and keep it held down, you'll see everything that's currently assigned to it becomes opaque and everything else becomes uh, translucent. And so I'm just going to click on the gun. And now you'll see that the gun and the hand are both assigned to the, uh, the hand bone. So now what I want to do, uh, Spider allows you to have a separate um, bone hierarchy and uh, Z order and number of uh, sprites per frame. So just because we added it to one keyframe, 
doesn't mean it's in the other keyframes. You'll see as soon as on the timeline we go past or into the second keyframe, the gun is gone. So now what we want to do is get the gun into every keyframe of the animation. And that's very easy. All I need to do is select the gun, make sure I'm on the first keyframe, select the gun, uh, press Control C to copy, and then uh, Control Shift Z, or what I could do is choose um, Edit Copy, where is it? Paste to all keys. There we go. Sorry about my confusion there for a second. Paste to all keys. And now you'll see the gun, although the uh, Z order is not appropriate anymore, the gun is now in the entire animation and in the right place relative to the bone. So all I need to do now is fix that Z order again. So uh, I'm clicking on the hand and I'm just going into the canvas and holding control and pressing the down arrow once. So now the gun is in the hand. And now what we need to do is we don't want to have to manually fix the Z order in every frame. So I'm just going to do edit copy Z order to other frames. And now you'll see as I drag through here that the Z order is correct now on all frames. So let me hide the bones and show you what what we've done to the idle animation. He's now holding his gun. So now that we have the default animation playing with him, with the player character at a relaxed state, not aiming the gun, we should really have a second version of the idle with him holding the gun out forward, um, ready to shoot. So how do we do that? We just click on the idle animation, and we click on this icon here, which is to clone. And then we have idle 000. zero. We're going to change that to idle. Uh, we'll just call it idle forward because he's aiming forward. And of course, you can use the same exact method to create variations of the idle aiming in as many directions as you'd like. Um, so again, we're going to go to the first keyframe. And now what we're going to do is actually start rotating the arm bones to make him aim the gun forward. And to do that, all we have to do is make sure we're in the first frame to start and just start rotating these bones and reposition the uh, the bone to the shoulder as we need, however we need, whatever looks right, and come up with a pose for the arm holding the gun that looks natural and comfortable. And then we can adjust this back arm to make more sense. Oops, if you accidentally grab the base back side of the bone, you'll move the bone instead of rotate. And I just uh, press Control Z to undo. There we go. Position that elbow better. Rotate that up and put that hand behind the gun. Something like that. Just play around with it until it feels pretty natural. Move that shoulder. So there we go. Now we have the um, now we have the character at least on the first frame aiming his gun. But what we need to do now is select, I'll zoom in again, we need to select all of the bones we changed position of. And in this case, it was just the shoulder and the forearm. We didn't have to do anything to the hands themselves. And you only need to copy the bones because the images are the slaves to the bones they're a child of. So I'm just going to press Control C again to copy those bones. And then Control Shift V or again um, paste all keys, and you'll see that the, uh, the aiming forward is now across the entire animation, but that is a bug in the current build of Spriter, where when you do paste all, uh, the Z order gets, uh, gets messed up again. So luckily, though, all we need to do is fix it in one keyframe, like so. There we go. And then choose Edit, Copy Z Order to All Frames. So there we go. I'll get rid of the bones. Here we have the idle ready to go aiming the gun. So we have two versions of the idle. One relaxed and not aiming the gun, and the other aiming the gun forward. Now that I've shown you how to easily tweak existing animations, I want to mention that in this previous video I made, 
I show how to actually paint over and edit the specific images in a Spriter project, just as the, uh, just like the uh, Gray Guy uh, project's image files, to go from something like this cat character, which is part of the um, full commercial version of the um, basic platformer animated art pack, um, and get to something like this. So obviously the first step, if, especially if you're not an artist or and if you're a, a game programmer, the, what you want to be able to do is start programming your game right away without having to wait for an artist to give you the final finished versions of all of your animations. So Spriter allows a programmer to tweak pre-existing animations uh, to at least make very, very high quality uh, placeholder animations very quickly and uh, that way not have a bottleneck while you're programming and then of course you can then take the time yourself after the fact once it's all working very well in the game to perfect your animations and customize your character or you can then work with an artist or hire an artist to uh, quickly edit or replace uh, and perfect your, uh, your character's look and his animations once you've finished all your custom animations, uh, if you need to use them in a game engine that does not support the actual uh, Spriter animation data format, uh, even with, this, with the free version of Spriter, you have the ability to export your animations uh, as uh, full-frame sequential PNG images. So for example, once you have the gun in the idle pose, or the idle forward pose, let's say, what you can do is select that animation, choose File, Export to PNG, and then choose a folder to uh, export those image to. I made a folder called Frames, and then I'm going to choose uh, Idle Forward as the file name. Click Save. And it's figuring out the cropping for the uh, potential cropping for the frames. And I can choose to export just the specific keyframes, or I can actually choose the number of frames, and it'll divide the number of frames evenly uh, based on the timing. Uh, uh, and then, or we can choose a specific frames per second. So let's say we wanted this animation to be saved out at 20 frames per second. We would just type in 20. Like so, oops, sorry about that. Uh, and then click OK. And it's exporting all of the images. So now if we go into that folder called Frames, you can see here they are. Sort them by name so they make more sense. I'll just go through here in the Windows preview. So you see we have the entire idle sequence at 20 frames per second. And uh, I should mention, there is a, a whole tutorial specifically on exporting images, so I won't cover everything. But I should also mention when you do export, um, when you do export, you also have options to export to specific uh, scales. So, um, you can see here, I'll put PNG size, we can make it 50% uh, of the original size or 25 or 200, whatever we need. Uh, uh, these images come fairly large, these animations come fairly large in the art packs. Most of the time for your actual game, you're going to want them smaller if you're exporting uh, PNGs. So uh, you would figure out how much of a reduction you would need and just enter that amount. And if the need arises, or once you're ready to uh, go to more advanced things, um, there's a full series of Spriter tutorials on how to use uh, every feature of Spriter, and uh, including this fairly recent how to create a walking animation, um, which literally starts from scratch, shows you how to export your images from a graphics program of all the different body parts, uh, bring them into Spriter, assign bones, uh, and 
finally get to the, uh, the finished product of a uh, completely custom animation from scratch. Uh, and the link to these tutorials will uh, be in the description of this video. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful, and thank you very much for watching.